Hi everyone, my name is Roshni and welcome back to Betty Grew Up. So I'm here to talk to you today about a really interesting visualization technique. This was something that I used when I was kind of in a transition period. So I knew that I was like interested in this new spiritual journey. I knew that I was going through a lot of healing at the time, but I also didn't really know anything about spirituality, anything about like visualization and I was just starting to learn about the law of attraction and all these different concepts out there. So I definitely wanted to share this with you um, because I think it really is something that's kind of an introductory experience to get into meditation and to get into visualization. Whenever I noticed that I was kind of like teetering off or just wanted to get a little bit more stability and like more of a sense of self-control in my life, this was something that I practiced and it honestly has helped me a lot and I hope that it can help you too. First thing I'm going to talk about is a quick way that you can just kind of reset or refresh your mind, refresh your aura, and just kind of put yourself in like an, a new mood to receive and just kind of like wash the junk of like the last few days or a past bad experience off of you, which is taking a salt shower or a salt bath. It's really just known to be something that resets you spiritually in a way. So whether it's something like going through a bad breakup or just having a bad day or just wanting to get yourself in like a fresh new mindset, taking um, four or five handfuls of salt and pouring it into a salt bath and then soaking in it no longer than 20 minutes. Or you can, you know, like I said, just pour a little bit of salt into like a Tupperware or just something that you can take in the shower with you and then just take some handfuls of that and as you're showering just kind of exfoliate yourself all over um, and also if you don't have access to a shower or a bath but you do live by the ocean that is some natural sea salt right there so you can definitely just hop into the ocean and that's also said to have some um, really cleansing properties. My tip number two is to actually try a um, visualization technique that's called the waterfall. So um, I read about this in a couple of different books. You might have heard about it before, but it's basically just visualizing like a beautiful waterfall. It could be somewhere that you've been already, somewhere that you've seen pictures of. Make it absolutely beautiful, as dreamy as you possibly can and just visualize like that water just kind of cleansing any bad juju off of you, washing off like the effects of a bad day or just like being around a toxic person, anything that you just want to get away from, um, you can visualize the water just washing that away. And with both the salt shower and the visualization um, of a waterfall, just really set the intention of like starting afresh, completely cleansing your spirit, your mind, your body, and just allow yourself to kind of like give birth to, to like this new version of you, you know? Try some of these tactics to really get yourself into a new mindset and to just start off on a clean slate. So now I'm gonna actually describe um, the main part of this video, which is how to visualize the emotions that you desire. It's kind of a combination of the law of attraction and just um, a normal visualization technique. If you have just been struggling with patience lately or the one that I started out with was a love, I just needed to have a little bit more love for myself, I needed to have more love for the people around me, for the life I was living, and, and I've also done this with gratitude. Like I said, it could be with any emotion. So basically what you do is you visualize the emotion that you desire. So like I said, I started out with love. So give love a color, give it like a weight or a density, give it a shape. Um, I kind of just visualize like these like thin wisps around me and I saw love as purple and kind of glimmery. So, you know, the step one is really to just visualize what you would see this emotion as and watch it surround you and just kind of engulf you, you know? So that's step number two is like really allow yourself to step into that emotion. And when I originally started doing this, I kind of saw it in front of me, maybe behind me, but it wasn't really on me. I didn't feel like I was in the center of like this love bubble. It was more just that it was there. I could see it. I could picture it, but I wanted to draw it near me.
what I first started doing is drawing in some really, really deep breaths from my diaphragm and just picturing every breath I, t I took, um, just kind of bringing that love, bringing that emotion closer and closer to me. So with every big deep breath, I would breathe in for six, hold for two, and then release for another six. So once you have it, you know, drawn closer to you, just kind of picture it coming around you, surrounding you, holding you basically. So you've kind of gotten yourself in this like bubble of emotion. And the third step to this is to incorporate some sort of movement. So if you are a dancer and you love just freestyle dancing, do that. Like I mentioned, I incorporated this into my yoga practice. So while I was doing yoga with every deep breath and because yoga is so connected to breath, it's a great choice. I just kind of pictured love um, coming closer to me and really being able to like breathe it in and just kind of like draw it into me. If possible, if you can do Pilates or, or yoga or just something like that, that's kind of connected to the ground, um, something that you can even if it's like an ab workout or just something, whatever comes natural to you, but it's a little bit more grounded, I would choose that. Um, and then just start picturing and continue the visualization of this emotion around you, surrounding you, and then finally, when it is closer to you, actually picture yourself breathing in the emotion. And then my last couple of tips are that once you get used to this practice and once you've done this a couple of times, you can picture it anywhere, anytime. So if you are doing this again, um, once you've really kind of seen the benefits of this practice and you've tried it a few times on your own, I encourage you to do this at any point, whether you're having a bad day or you're having like a frustrating meeting at work or an annoying class. It doesn't matter where you are, but if you're not having a good time or if you just feel like there's something that you want or desire or you want to feel a certain way you can picture any emotion that you would like and do it at any time the more you try it the better that you get at this practice and you can you know do it even more and more casually wherever you are you could picture this while you're driving to somewhere that you don't really want to go um, and it can kind of just be this really restorative and preventative practice The point of practices like this is basically that your brain is always working, you know, your thoughts are always firing off and whether you want to admit it or not, they're definitely affecting you, they're affecting your whole life and they're affecting the way that you go about everything and especially as a person who has you know, a number of anxiety disorders and is diagnosed with depression, I completely understand, you know, feeling like your brain is controlling you, like you have no control over, you know, how you're going to feel that day or when things are going to, you know, just kind of make you spiral out of control. Our brain is honestly a tool and you can have like a setback with, with depression or you can just have a panic attack. But at the end of the day, there's something that especially with anxiety that really triggered it um, into existence. And sometimes it happens so quickly or so subconsciously that we don't even notice, but there is always a way that you can gain control back. But just having some of these practices in your tool belt for when you do get, you know, a, when you do have a panic attack or when you are feeling really anxious or depressed, just kind of helps you. A, it allows you to feel like you have some level of control over what your mind is doing, but B, it just helps you know that in the back of your mind, if you are having a panic attack or if you are getting really, really anxious or you're dreading something, that you can just picture any emotion, picture the way that you want to feel, picture, you know, just like a sense of serenity. Breathe that into you and even just the act of focusing on a visualization practice can really allow your mind to take a step back and to kind of refocus its energy and its attention because even if it happens subconsciously or you don't realize it, your mind is sending you thoughts all the time. So even if it's saying like, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, I can't do it, the world is against me, this is going to be a disaster, yada yada yada, the thoughts that we all have at some point, if you can just even refocus that instead of talking about what you can't do, how it's going to fail, how, you know, this is what always happens. Even if you can take a little bit of that energy and refocus it into what you do want to happen, you can start to kind of change the narrative and start to change the story of what you're constantly telling yourself. 
And I'll make some videos later on limiting beliefs um, and how that how they can truly affect us. And I actually did create a whole course on how we can discover our limiting beliefs, how we can heal past traumas, and how we can start to create new beliefs um, for ourselves. So if you're interested, I will link that course down below in the description box. But um, it's really just about making your brain work for you as much as you can. And like I said, I do understand what it's like to have different disorders and I understand what it's like for your brain to kind of feel like it has a mind of its own. Um, but even if you've had a bad panic attack, you had a really crap day, you can always come home, take a salt shower or visualize a waterfall washing that crap off and then just letting yourself start anew. You don't have to carry around the burden and the weight of every single emotional disaster that's ever happened to you. And trust me, I used to be that way and it's freaking exhausting and it doesn't really help anyone to just hold on to that and get bitter about it and feel resentful in every new situation and think that every new situation is going to completely turn against you and bring you down. Um, that's not a fun way to live life and I'm telling you this from experience because I was like that for years. And a lot of these practices genuinely did make a huge difference in my life. And I'm not going to say that, you know, it solved every problem, but it's given me the energy and the ability to come at problems in a completely new way. And even though there's been a number of bad things that have even happened to me in this year, having this practice um, and being able to just reframe my mind into a more healthy outlook on things has made such a big difference in me not holding on to them, not holding on to grudges and to just allow myself to heal and to keep living life in a fun and light way. I really hope that this video helped you. If you want more free content like this, head over to bettygrewup.com. I have a new blog post about things that are completely different than what I talk about on this channel over on my website, and I will link that course below if you are interested. I would definitely love to hear from you if you try this practice as well. Um, so definitely don't be shy to comment below and let me know if this um, so definitely don't be shy to comment. So definitely don't be shy to comment below and let me know if you tried it and how it made you feel. Bye.